the various VLSI domains that are available currently in the scenario. So what is basically VLSI? VLSI stands for, as we all know, is, that is very large scale integration. Uh, it is basically consists of IC designing, that is uh, the fabrication process or the building of processors and ICs right from the scratch, that is from silicon or uh, sand. So VLSI has a huge domain and also it is a very promising career as in the current market scenario, we all know that there is a shortage of uh, IC chips globally. And uh, it is uh, the design engineers, with the verification engineers are very much in demand right now. So now this slide uh, shows the latest trends uh, in the market about VLSI. Apple recently launched uh, the M1 chip, which is very much faster as compared to the other CPUs and GPUs in the market. It is about 3.5 X times faster than the normal CPUs. And uh, also the amazing part is that it contains 16 billion transistors in it and it has an eight core GPU and an eight core CPU. And moreover, the speed performance is also very much faster as compared to other CPUs. That is uh, in the third point, I can I have noted that it offers about two X times the faster CPU performance and also at a uh, promising of 25% of the power. So VLSI has uh, been uh, really uh, fast forwarding in its domain. So the various job opportunity, opportunities in VLSI industries are, first of all, the design engineers, the verification engineers, the CAD or computer aided design engineers, the fabrication engineers, the application and marketing and sales. So first and foremost, we will start with the design engineers. So the design engineers basically are of two types, uh, analog design engineers, digital design or RTL design engineers. Moreover, nowadays, uh, analog and mixed signal design engineers or RFIC design engineers are also into market. Uh, the physical design engineers or the analog design engineers uses some basic methodologies such as it uses the concept of reusability. That is uh, the already fixed gates and decoders and the flip-flops are in the library. They just use it through their coding and they implement their circuits. And uh, that is called as standard cell-based design or semi-custom design. And coming to full custom design, here the designers use a certain portion of the circuit such as op-amp, which cannot be reused uh, because we know that op-amp behaves differently in uh, negative feedback and differently in positive feedback. So it cannot be used over, over, uh, over a particular circuit. So full custom designs are used in phys uh, VLSI physical uh, design. So next comes, uh, here I've mentioned that synthesis, the synthesis part has been done. Next comes the floor planning, the partitioning and placement and routing. This comes under the uh, backend designing. What we do is here that we decide the floor planning and we check if the IC placement over the core over the die uh, is very minimum or not. And there is uh, certainly not delays or some uh, excess power consumption. These things, uh, the design engineers check and the design specific titles include the front-end designers of ASIC and FPGA. ASIC is application specific integrated ICs and uh, FPGM is field programmable gate arrays. Uh, the backend designers, AMS or analog mixed engineers, DFT or design for test engineers, the PCB designer board engineers and the library developers. So, Basically, design engineers uh, proportions to the major part of the VLSI industry. Now, coming to verification engineers, after the designing has been done, the engine, this engineer's task is to verify and it makes sure that the design works properly. Here, several test benches are used. Uh, for example, the latest market uh, designs uses System Verilog by Accelera, which was bought by Synopsys back in 2005. And uh, basically, the verification part is the most time consuming part of the whole VLSI chip process. It consumes almost about 40 to 50% of the time. Uh, so it is also very much hectic. And uh, this domain requires uh, some specific coding. Also, uh, this uh, it uses UVM or the universal verification methodology methodologies. It is a language of the system Verilog under which there are several like input format given to the circuit called a simulation and the output is observed whether it is correct or not according to the some verified and already pre-structured output. So it contains about the front end verification, the acceleration type or emulation, which is also called as FPGA based verification, the hardware software co-verification and uh, the behavior modeling and verification of the IP implementation also. Now, uh, verification engineers are also of front end and back end. Back end includes the ST engineers, so static timing analysis. These uh, type of engineers, what, with, what they do is that they check the counter circuits, that is each and every clock are reaching to each and every portion of the circuits at the right time or not. So that, that is some another domain of verification engineers. And uh, there are also some uh, post silicon based uh, verification engineers. That is also some other domain of verification engineers. 
Now coming to CAD engineers, CAD engineers or computer aided engineers, these engineers are responsible for managing the latest trends in the EDA tools. Now the EDA tools that are uh, available are Synopsys, Cadence, Mental Graphics. These are some famous EDA tools, the rest of also are available, but these are very much industry-based and already being used in the industry. So the CAD engineers are responsible for upbringing the latest technology through programming into these software so that the latest IC can be fabricated at a much more easier and a much more uh, lesser time as compared to what we previously done through the verification engineers. Now this job also like uh, it is responsible for driving the improvements in the work environments for the SOC or system on chip designs. And uh, this also uh, requires some interpersonal skills as I mentioned in the third point. Now, coming to fabrication engineers, fabrication engineers or fab engineers, what we call in short form, are responsible for like, first of all, the design is being done, then it is tested through some uh, already created test benches that is some design under test. First of all, stimulation is done in the, uh, the physical design circuit. Then it is uh, put under DUT or design under test and the output is observed. That is called verification. Now, after the design and verification is completed, the specific design, once we all know that it is uh, based on the uh, industry requirement and it is also working properly, then it is uh, sent to fab labs. Now, currently India doesn't have its own fab labs, but uh, hoping that we can see uh, in the upcoming future and that is the fab labs may come into India. So the fabrication engineers are particularly responsible for manufacturing the silicon wafers right from uh, the sand to the IC or the, uh, the disc, what we like see in the silicon discs. So fabrication engineers are responsible for crystal purification, then crystal growth, wafer slicing, etching, polishing, masking, uh, lithography, and the various process involved in the sil uh, silicon manufacturing. Now, the fabrication engineers must ensure that it has to be a deep and clean room, and uh, the pressure also must be have a positive pressure inside the fab labs. And uh, there are also several methods of fabrication such as CZ and FZ, so that we all know. So after uh, the complete fabrication, now comes the role of application engineers and marketing and sales. The application engineers as the job title is just uh, creates a link between the R&D to the customers. The R&D after being manufacturing and designing the chips, the what are the design uh, requirements required for the customers they inform the customer uh, to the r d team and after manufacturing again these application engineers inform back to the customers about how the r d team has created and whether or not the uh, system i see that has been uh, created uh, planned or uh, performed is actually meeting the demands of the customers so verification uh, uh, application engineers are basically of three types field application engineers that is the pre-sales that is, they, they tell the R&D companies, R&D people about the customer requirements. And then comes the post sales of the corporate application engineers. Uh, it creates a bridge between the R&D through the customers and then application consultants. And marketing and sales, this basically promotes the brand values of the companies about it, its uh, brand name and uh, several features of the technology that they are using. So a good application engineering usually becomes a marketing and sales and if he or she has interest in sales. Now, this slide depicts the several number of uh, companies, not all, but a few I have listed. There are also so, so many companies right now that are operating in India, which are, uh, which are functioning in the VLSI domains. This list includes the MNCs, EDA tools, EDA tool-based companies, service-based companies, some government uh, organizations, startups, etc. The top 10 players are Intel, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, uh, Samsung, Texas, AMD, ARM, IBM, Microchip, etc. And then... Uh, for uh, memory-based or the flash memory-based companies such as uh, Mediatek, uh, Micron, and then Marvel Semiconductors, some EDA tool players such as the Cadence, Mental Graphics, Synopsys, some startups, uh, some uh, service-based companies such as Mirafra, L uh, TCS uh, Wipro, and some government organizations such as Bark, DRDO, ISRO are also in this list. Now we will take uh, some glimpse into the companies, what they, do, they actually do. Uh, for example, Intel, uh, Intel headquartered in uh, the Silicon Valley, California. This basically manufactures and designs the several uh, integrated circuits, uh, microprocessors, motherboards, etc. Uh, then comes TSMC, headquartered in Taiwan, China. Uh, this is responsible uh, for manufacturing. Because, uh, it has the largest like independent fab labs on its own. And uh, several companies such as Apple, uh, Apple, 
gives its manufacturing base to TSMC. Even Qualcomm uh, doesn't have its own fabrication lab. So it gives its contract to companies like TS TSMC for their manufacturing part. Now, Qualcomm is a global semiconductor and also telecommunication, like the latest 5G and all is by Qualcomm only. So it is responsible for the fabrication, but although it doesn't have any in-house design capabilities, but it is into some contracts with some other MNCs like TSMC and all. Now, Broadcom is mainly responsible for Bluetooth connectivity, routers, switches, and et cetera. It is also headquartered in the uh, USA. NVIDIA is best known for the GPUs. Uh, is, they are very much uh, promising in the market. And I, uh, I think no other companies can, like uh, right now, like at the level of NVIDIA. And uh, NVIDIA is very much promising and uh, produces faster GPUs, which are used by some uh, photographers for some photo editing, high-end photo editing, designing, and the gamers, digital artists, and et cetera. And uh, then comes Texas Instruments, and it is headquartered in Dallas, Texas. And uh, it fabricates basically analog devices. It is mainly into analog devices, but it also produces some of the digital and uh, AMS, uh, like analog mixed signal products. And uh, it is interesting to note that Texas Instrument was first uh, started as a geophysical company, but not as an electronics company. It uh, usually promotes the manufacturing of some ICs for the defense purposes. But later on in the 1960s, it uh, totally shifted into its uh, like uh, producing analog ICs. Then comes Micron. This Micron and some other companies like Marvel and MediaTek produces flash drives, memory chips, RAM, ROMs, these kind of things. Micron is also headquartered in uh, USA. Then comes Samsung. It is uh, globally uh, in the net worth or causing the revenue. It is the at most largest semiconductor company in whole of the world. Uh, by far, the revenue is generated as concerned. It produces uh, wholesale like DRAM, SRAM for other companies for being used. And uh, Samsung is uh, headquartered in Seoul, uh, South Korea. So the picture depicts the top 10 largest companies. At, uh, in, in, they're also present in India. So that's all from my side. Uh, so thank you.